So summer's coming to an end, and we're moving into the fall season. It's uh, late August now. Um, this is a pumpkin. My good friend over at uh, Just Carve Rob Carving on YouTube carved me this pumpkin, uh, the Pumpkin King, a few years ago. Because, well, one year I carved like uh, 70 or 80 pumpkins, I think, with my chainsaw and Dremel carvings and a whole bunch. So here's the Pumpkin King. So, Halloween decor. These uh, are some pumpkins. It's a cedar fence board. It's uh, three quarters inches thick. You could use any kind of old scrap wood that you got lying around for this project. This is a very simple Dremel carving project for the very beginning people that want to get into Dremel power carving. Um, I just quickly drew the outlines, cut them outside with my bandsaw. You could um, use your jigsaw for these. If I wasn't at my carving tent, I would have used my jigsaw at home here. So we got a bigger one and a smaller one. So what I'm going to do today is carve a simple pumpkin in this fence board. Lots of you guys around the world, um, lots of your fence boards are pine, or you could use what, any kind of scrap wood that you got lying around for this project. So I'm just going to kind of carve this, just a simple pumpkin, the old school triangle eyes, triangle nose, the, we'll decide what kind of teeth we're going to use. I'm basically going to use one burr for this whole carving. That's what this video is about. This, I'm running a Dremel 4000. This is the Apex Forge flex shaft that I've been using lately. It's um, holding out very well. I like it. It's comfortable. Uh, somebody sent me an email asking me, why do I use this handpiece, this flex shaft, than using the whole Dremel? Well, a Dremel's like holding a brick, and this is like holding a nice pencil, and you can draw on the wood and carve with this so it fits nicely in your hand. So the first thing to do is we're going to round these edges. And why I'm going to use this burr, it's going to take me a bit longer to round the edges with this because this is the silver taper burr. I usually use the extreme flame burr. The silver taper burr, you could use the whole edge, the whole side of it like this. And you, it's a good way to remove a lot of wood fast. I don't know if I have the extreme one. If I have the extreme one, I'll uh, see if I can hook that one up. And also, we got to take this pumpkin top stock back. So it's just like a, this is a simple 2D carving. It will make a great gift for anybody for Halloween. And um, the seasons are coming. Halloween and Christmas, get your carvings on. So everybody, so you know, this is the cutsaw bit here. To get these bits, go to the description below. It'll take you to the cutsaw site. Use code CFUSION. You'll save yourself 5%. These bits come in three different grits. They come in gold, silver, and black. Gold is finest, silver is the medium, and black is the most aggressive. I wish I had a black one here. They're called extreme. I don't. So we'll just, um, I'm not in any rush to get this curving done today. It's just about having fun and um, killing some time, making a gift for a friend. So we'll use this uh, silver one. So what I'm going to do, this line here for the stock, I'm going to cut this line down. And I'm going to cut this. Where's the pen? Stand by, please. So what I'm going to do first is this line here, I'm going to cut this thinner and remove the wood, all this wood here. That way you can push the stock back and then turn the carving into the stock so it looks like, you know, the stock's normally in the middle of the pumpkin, right? Or kind of the middle. I have my uh, Dremel 4000 with the flex up hooked up to a foot pedal. So foot pedal makes it so I don't have to turn, go over with my hand and turn the Dremel on and off. It's just so much easier to stop and start with the foot pedal. The foot speed control pedal, the foot pedals with speed control do not work for the Dremels, the newer Dremels anyways. So I'm just going to cut along this line and remove this wood. You see there what I did is I cut a little chattel and then I start removing the wood. You don't want to cut too deep of a chattel with these burrs in here because it will create two walls, one wall on this side, one wall on this side, and these burrs could get stuck inside there if you got two walls and then you'll break the flex shaft inside here. So just kind of do some carving, remove, carving, remove. Thank you. 
Okay, so you can see I'm taking the depth back. So I can carve, carve again deep in there and remove some more. See how I'm running this burr on its side? Because you could remove all the wood. These burrs are great because you can use the point of it to do like uh, thin carvings or you can use the side to remove lots of wood. And all we're going to do is just keep removing this wood around here. What we're, our objective is not to make this piece look so flat. We're trying to make it look round. And um, Okay, so look, that's done already. That's, you know, we can put some uh, textures in there later. So I don't know, this burr might be a little bit too slow for me because I don't have the extreme, the black one to remove all the wood on here, but I'll just show you a quick example. See, I'm just using that burr on the side. See how it's slowly rounding that sharp corner? And when you're doing this, take your time. It's supposed to be a fun project. There's no hurry to get it done. You're supposed to be enjoying your time, right? So you can see here now it's starting to get round. This burst actually, I talk about taking your time. I, I can never take my time. For all you that don't know me, I'm heavy hands and I always got to do things super quick so I'm going to switch it up with this extreme flame burr see how spiky it is and then I will remove some wood fast then we could smooth it out with this burr after so I'm going to put this burr on right now now this burr here is my 100% go-to burr you got the fat side you could use it on or you could use a tip for shallower carvings now let's remove some wood fast And like I said, don't rush like you see me rushing. See how much faster it removes the wood. If you want to get into Dremel carving, you need to get yourself burrs like this. There's a few different brands. My favorite is the cut saw, but there's like Sabretooth out there and uh, Fordham makes them too. I think they're called the Typhoons. Don't just use the Dremel burrs because everything will go so slow and... Once you get these type of burrs, it's a game changer and it, you just have so much more fun. Okay, so you guys can see how much faster this burr is working. So how about I go around here, make everything round, and then um, do this edge here. See that? It just digs right in. I'll make this all round. And your pumpkin doesn't have to be perfect round. Show me a perfectly round pumpkin. Some of them are all totally warped. I'll get this done and be back. Okay, so there you can see I got all the uh, edges, edges rounded. When you're just getting into wood carving, there's so much um, different things to learn. This video is basically, you know, lots of people, when they're first carving, I get lots of messages about the burrs jumping out and you know, you're carving and all of a sudden the burr will jump. First of all, don't wear cloth gloves when you're using these burrs because this burr will grab the cloth glove and you will break your flex shaft. So I don't suggest, I su suggest a thin, a uh, thick or thin leather glove that's smooth so that if the burr hits it, it can just skip off. Um, for all of you that, that are just getting into it, it happened to me when I first started. I'd be carving and the burr would sit there and it would jump and it would want to take off. Just my best suggestion for that is just do a lighter to the touch and just don't push so hard on the burr. And also, so if I'm carving here and this thing's going to want to kick and go this way, also make sure the hand that you're holding the piece, if it kicks, it slips, it comes off and it doesn't catch your hand. Because if I'm holding that here, boom, it's going to catch it. So always make sure you're up. I'm left-handed, so it's opposite for most of you people out there.
and grain. So like if you look at this piece, this would be face grain. See how the grain, you're carving through the layers. See that? One layer, two layer, three, four, five, six. This is fairly wide grain cedar. But this over here is basically, well, it's almost edge grain. Um, so it's straight up and down. When you've got wider grain like this, I'm not too sure how it is with pine, but you see the darker spots in the grain where it's darker there? That is the harder part of the grain. I think that would be the winter time of the grain and it, the tree doesn't grow as fast. The lighter parts, the summer, the summer time where the tree grows. So here's one grain, two grain. So you'll see here, let me get a pen or a little bird to, sh to point it out. So this is one grain. Look at this part right here on the outside. This is one grain right here. Okay. The darker stuff would be from the winter time. The lighter stuff would be the summertime where the tree grows faster. So the lighter stuff is not as hard as the darker stuff. So meaning that, getting to the point, when you're carving this here, you can kind of see it's a little bit bump. I don't know how well you can see on the camera, but it's a little bit bumpy there because this, this extreme burr is so aggressive. When it hits the softer spot of the grain, it digs in. Then it hits a darker spot and it's harder to carve. So you'll get bumps. So when you get bumps like that, from the different grains, I don't know, maybe you can see better, like here's a full grain right here. And you can see, I don't know if you guys can see on video how it's dented in there because I, I hit the softer spot right in there where it's dented. You can see that dent in there like a channel. Use a less aggressive burr and just kind of let the burr do the work and then you won't dig into the grain so much and get those bumps, all right? If that makes sense to you. So to recap, when you're getting those bumps, use your fast, aggressive burr, switch to a less aggressive burr, and then go over these bumps nice and easy because then it won't dig in so much with a less aggressive burr. I hope that made sense to you. Now, we got um, got a pen here. So, you get, you know, what I don't know what they're called, pumpkin ass crack bumps or whatever, you know, they're lines that come down here. I don't like to have those lines. That, the pumpkin lines where my face is. So it just, I just don't think it looks very good when you do a carving. You can, you can have the line here and here, but I wouldn't do it in there. This is simple carving. Look at me, I've been carving for seven or eight years now and here I am back to doing a simple pumpkin. The more that you do simple carvings like this for the very beginners, the more that you're, you're gonna get used to using your hand tool, you're gonna get used to using all your tools, and you're going to get used to carving different types of wood and how the wood carves. All right. So there's it. And I always suggest a center line. And everything I say is just my opinion. So let's start off with our nose. Where do we want our nose? Going to go like this. And I don't care how I, how everything is. <sighs> I don't care how like nothing's perfect on this pumpkin carving. You can do eyes like this. Oops, that shouldn't be center line. That should be off a bit more. You can do eyes like this. I like these eyes the best. And then your, so here's one eye here. Don't pay attention to that. Obviously, you guys saw that. So let's just do a simple, we'll do a cut here and a, some like, uh, whatever they're called, cuts like that. And also, we need to carve in these lines here on the side and make them kind of rounded so we can paint inside there. We're going to paint everything. I got two, I've been working on two pumpkins here. So let's see here, center line. Let's do a different style pumpkin here. This one, the tr normal triangle. Let's just do one uh, triangle, one circle. And what, we'll, I think you basically got to stick with the triangle nose for, if you want to, these are the old school kind of pumpkins. And then this one can be like, give them a happy face. Give them some buck teeth. Give them maybe one baby tooth there or something. So now we're going to switch burrs again. We're going to put this this uh, taper burr on. And we're going to carve inside these eyes and remove the wood inside there. We might have to switch to another burr. You know, there's so many different types of burrs. We might um, use this uh, round burr. See if we can get inside there to clean it all up good. Because we'll take these eyes back a little bit. Eyes, nose, mouth. And then, um, yeah, carry on. So what I'm going to do first is cut on this line and you're going to see me 
drag this burr because I want to use I want to use lots of this burr to carve it instead of just using the tip. If you use more burr, it carves faster. Okay. You know, let's just smooth those lot those cut lines in there, but let's just smooth them out around the edges. See, I'm just rounding that cut edge. So your jack, this would be a, I guess it would be a jackalope or just a carved pumpkin. You got to think like uh, if this was actually a real pumpkin, you got to make it look like the top, the top parts that comes out off to be able to put your light in there. So let's just go like this. We'll, we'll cut that line. Okay, so there's our, pretend this top piece comes off, you can put your light in there. Um, okay, so let's do these eyes. There's different, I got so many different bits, but I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible as I can for you, so you guys don't need to go out and buy a thousand bits. You can see I've only used two bits so far, the extreme and this one, so let's try and do it with this one. Like I said, don't feel like you have to push as hard as I do because you see how, I don't know if you guys saw, but that bird just hit my thumb. All right. Is there any cuts or anything on there? Nothing. That's where it hit right there. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Now I'll start removing the wood in there. Okay, so that's all right. I can see this side is a bit lower than this side, so I'll drop it a bit. We'll get another burr after to clean out the inside of these eyes, make it smooth in there. Let's do the nose. Actually, you guys saw how I did the eyes, so let's do this lip here. See how I'm turning those things at different angles? Spin it around, get in there good. 
I suggest to make everything about like that deep in there because don't forget you got to sand this. So when you sand, you don't want to make it so you you sand all this stuff away. Okay, so I'll get this dart nose carved out. You guys can see what's going on here. I'll get this nose carved out. Then I'll find a different burr to clean up on the inside here. Okay, so I got this one done. I went with the normal lip. There, that's the easiest to do, like where they're the cuts. I'm just going to use the extreme flame burr to get inside here. So all you guys have to do basically is get a few burrs. I might use a the gold extreme flame burr to clean this whole piece up, like sand it after. But this is the same extreme flame burr to get in there. Just use it on its side. That's why I don't, for power carving, that's why I don't like to have my pieces in a vise because you're able to move it around like this, right? So. Okay, so we need to put some uh, lines, give this character some character up here. Same with this one. My pinky's broken. I can't bend it, so I use this pinky as a lever point but keep trying to keep your fingers away from these more aggressive burrs 100 percent okay so there we go now let's switch up this burr just to show you guys different burrs to like you know to get inside here you can get ones like this that are have the cutters on the bottom so see that's like a cone but it's too big you can get little diamond burrs that will fit in there too right that are flat bottom like this this is an aluminum cutter see it has the cutter out teeth on the bottom then you can cut inside there with this like that um there's so many different types of burrs on this this um power carving you can get uh cone burrs like this see it's this is the i forget this is the dovetail i think this is a cone uh i forget the name of this one Paper burr, but you see they're different. Get a square edge with that. You can do sharper points with this one too. You can get up in there with the eyes, sharper points. Actually, I think I'll do that. Um, I'll put this burr on. See the difference in size? Here's my go-to burr that cuts all extreme flame. And here's just a silver taper burr, but see how it's pointier and more square? Squarish looking. I'll put that on. Then I'll run around and go like this. And all the eyes give them the triangle eyes give them kind of a sharper points okay i'll just show you a quick demo so let's do the uh this eye here just try and use the side to flatten out inside there that's good enough um this nose. See how that just made it more square? Not square, I don't know what the word would be, but look at this one, okay? Right here. Gives it more of a square 45. There you go, that's the word. So the more burrs that you have in your arsenal, 
the better better of a carver you're going to be, in my opinion. Okay, now let's get that other bird to, um, where is it? I think this is a gold, uh, I gotta find the gold extreme flame bird. Okay, so here's a brand new cut saw gold extreme flame bird. See how fine that is? So all I'm gonna do run around, do is run around now and get rid of all the pen marks and kind of do the sanding with it. Okay, so anyways, you guys can see what's going on with that. So how about I get all this sanded off, uh, cleaned up, and I guess we're ready to do some painting. <laughs> okay, so you can see here I got a little hole drilled up top there. That's so I can put a rope in there, a little string. Somebody can hang it for decorations. This is something you don't see me doing too often. Here's some uh, 80 grit sandpaper. Now I'm just going to run over and kind of uh, sand all the... Well, I'm just going to sand it as smooth as I want to sand it. Okay. 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 So, earlier I said, do you ever see a perfectly round pumpkin? Well, I don't know what I was thinking, but these pumpkins are almost perfectly round. I can't even try to make perfectly round if I was trying. So, these kind of look like baseball pumpkins, but that's okay. You guys are getting my point. So, try and make your, before you, when you have this uh, piece of fence board or whatever board, make sure you don't um, cut it out round. Well, I tried not to, but that's just what happens. So, now, you can see I got the depth in there for black paint, orange paint, and uh, I'm going to do that later tonight because uh, I still want to be loud now and I don't want to be loud in this carving room in the nighttime. So, I'm going to blast off a uh, wood spirit and uh, paint these later tonight. Okay, so let's talk about uh, painting. Here is some dollar store acrylic black paint and a carving fusion paint tray here. The dollar store paintbrushes. All I do is quickly paint inside these things black. All right, so there's one done. I'll do the other. The other one's off uh, screen. Oops. That's okay, because I'll paint over that uh, orange later. Just kind of dilute it. And, and I paint inside the mouth here, too. And another thing, too, once the paint's dry, because i got to wait till this paint's dry before I paint the orange so, so it doesn't blend together, um, you could always sand this part off, too, where you get extra paint where it's not supposed to be. can even paint in um, these lines here. This looks like a baseball pumpkin. But we'll do some uh, dry brushing in those lines after. Okay, so I'll get all this black paint um, done and dried, and then I'll move on to the orange. Okay, so I'm the least picky um, artist there is to a default. I already signed it. Um, when I, one thing that drives me crazy though is when I'm doing stuff like this and painting, I always kind of, you know, like you, so you got walls of the eye there. I always kind of turn it around and look in different lights and I'll see spots that I missed. Like if I miss a spot there, I'll hit it and I'll, you know, I'll turn it. See, like right now I see a spot down on, in that mouth because you can see it in different lighting. So maybe that's a tip for some of you. I don't know. This is just the basic video. And so I'm done painting this. I'm going to have to sand it because you can see I don't have much patience. So you got a hair dryer or a heat gun. You can speed up the drying time of the paint. So I'll get this all dry. I'll sand it and then we'll paint some orange. And we'll paint the uh, top stalks green too. Okay, so the paint's pretty well dry. And like I said, this is a very beginner pump pumpkins um we got some Maj Paj here so you get the clear you get the clear you get the crystal uh, sorry the, the water base check check 
Okay, so the paint's all dry. It's a silly pumpkin. What, like, what can you say? Um, we've got some Maj Podge here. Um, we got the glossy. This is water stuff's water base. You got the glossy, then you got the matte. So I think, um, I don't know what I poured on here. I think it was matte. So what I'm going to do now is give it the, mo I know what's called Mod Podge, but I like calling it Maj Podge. I'm going to um, quickly give it a coat of this. And then, because you see how this kind of just looks like a silly pumpkin? I don't know. I don't think I'll be able to make it a not silly pumpkin. But these, this makes a great gift. Um, I'll get this on here. And then we'll give it a black wash. So hopefully it doesn't look so silly. And yes, you can see the paint there. I just left it on like, there, like that. I don't care. This... Um, takes a while to dry actually not that long to dry but i got a date tonight so i'm gonna get, get this done i gotta go really quicker get this done let it dry maybe i'll come back tonight after the date and um finish this video off or if the date goes good and you know you know you know i'll, I'll make, finish it off tomorrow morning okay so here's a little pumpkin i thought i was filming when i did the bigger one and i wasn't Here's the Mod Podge. This is just watered down black, cheap dollar store acrylic paint that I showed you earlier that I painted the inside with the eyes. And I'm using a new microphone. Once again, yes, I got another microphone. I've had about 30 different microphones. I'm never happy. This one's a little bit more expensive though, so hopefully it lasts. Let's try it with noise reduction. Noise reduction. Is there noise reduction? So all you do is just Wipe on the black watered down paint. And this just gives it so it's like, doesn't look so, I don't know, perfectly painted. It just gives some, makes it look more antiqued, I guess. Antiquing would be the word. And I kind of got this from uh, Just Carve Rob. Lots of the work that he does. Because if you haven't, don't know Just Carve Rob, he's my favorite YouTube channel him and studio in the lake but uh, Ben hasn't been making any videos he's been busy doing life stuff I guess all right Ben but here you go so there it is Just wipe on the, the, the watered down paint and wipe it off now the pumpkin doesn't look so new anymore there's two silly pumpkins I don't know if, I think I think these are great to do for the very beginners because you're using they make great gifts you can even sell these for i don't know what i'd sell them for but they make great gifts and the more that you use your tool carving in, in deep inside these eyes and making everything round and stuff the more that you use your tool you're going to get better i promise you that i guarantee you that you know start off with little pumpkins like this or little i don't know little foxes or little bears like this then if you want to get into different things, do different things. If you want to carve pumpkins all year long, carve pumpkins all year long. Don't care what anybody thinks, right? Just do what makes you happy. And I don't know. Just the more you spend time with a tool, the better you're going to get. Oh, yeah. Where's that wood spirit I carved? All right. That's it for this one, everybody. So the more time you spend with the tools, the better you'll get. The more wood spirits you do, the better that you'll get. You'll see here. I just uh, had some of this twine. That's what I did to uh, hang the pumpkins. The, the, it's an open ball field. You can do whatever you want to do. There's so much more stuff you can do. And boom, look what we got. We got Christmas trees ready to go. Yep, it's getting to be that time of year. Be well, everybody. That's it for this one. Carb Fusion, over and out. Long live the pumpkin king, the pumpkin king, I'm the pumpkin king. Long live the pumpkin king, the pumpkin king, the pumpkin king.